So, that was Silent Hill 2. How'd you like it? Did you enjoy it? It's a little heavy in the ending, but I think this is probably one of the best horror games ever made, if not the best, and simply one of the best games out there, period. There's nothing that has done this before or since, and it's not for a lack of trying, because so many games want to be Silent Hill 2 over again. <laughs> When the game released, it did pretty well. And part of doing pretty well on the PlayStation 2 means that you get to release your game again as a Greatest Hits version. So, in the re-release of the game, the Greatest Hits edition, they added a scenario called Born From A Wish, in which you can play as a different character. So this was uh, basically director's cut content. Just, a, just an excellent little, little bonus for you. When I woke up, I was all alone. Everyone's gone. Is it because of those monsters? What do I do now? Do I fight and live? Or do those monsters get me? I don't have any reason to go on living. But I'm scared to die. I'm so afraid of pain. Should I... run away? I want to find... somebody. I don't like being alone. But... But is there anyone left alive? So, there's a couple of interesting things going on here, one of which is that one of the things this game wants to talk about is the ways that people can hurt each other by being in proximity. One of the parts of that is that being around other people can be abrasive, especially if you're forced into proximity. For instance, the people you live with in an apartment building, the people that you're next to in a hospital or a prison or a hotel. We all affect each other with our actions. So even if people don't mean it, they can still hurt each other by existing in proximity and just being themselves. That's kind of just a part of a human condition, right? And what's interesting to learn is that Maria is hurting much more badly than James realizes. That the reason that Maria is tempting James the way that she is, the reason she wants to be his Mary, is because she's lonely. Because she wants something to live for. Like, maybe if she was Mary, James would take care of her, would love her, would give her the things that she wants. It makes her distinctly different from the monsters, even if she is a manifestation of the town. It's the basic idea of finding out you're literally a manifestation of someone else's psyche is fucking terrifying. One of the things I think that we're going to learn during the course of this scenario is that Maria is a little more complicated than just being James's manifestation of Mary. <laughs> and that's interesting. So this is where most of the scenario takes place, inside this mansion. Wow, what a mansion! I don't know if it's on purpose, but these three light switches with like the gold box around them really remind me of this card puzzle in Silent Hill 1, where you've got like a yellow card with three black rectangles on it and you gotta put it in a door in the Midwich Elementary School. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's on purpose. It's kind of kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> do not use. Don't you do it. Is somebody there? Open up. Hello? Stop it. You're disturbing me. <gasps> Thank God. I finally found somebody. Can you open the door? No. But why? Is it really necessary for me to answer all your tedious questions? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I want to be alone. Other people just irritate me. I just want to see another human face. Do you know what's happening in this town? There's no one here. 
Just monsters. Yes, I know. But so what? It has nothing to do with me. No one here means there's no one to disturb me. You want to be alone in this insane asylum? Yes, exactly. But how can you say that it's this town that's insane? Perhaps it's we who are insane. Both of us. Hopelessly insane. Are you satisfied? Would you leave me alone? Humanity is the virus. <laughs> My name. Maria. What's your name? Ernest. Hemingway? Baldwin. Ernest? I'll be back. So I like Ernest. I think Ernest's great. She won't take the hint. Here's my favorite thing about this. This sets up a really interesting and clear dynamic that we're dealing with. Maria is a character who wants somebody else. She just needs to be around someone else right now. And Ernest is somebody who just wants to be alone. A simple, clear-cut, a perfect conflict. <laughs> For some reason, there's a ladder in the fireplace leading up. There's a square depression in the center of the tombstone, and above that is a carefully carved epitaph. Along with you died joy, all that remains is despair and a future of meaningless tomorrows. But I will never give up. One, to see your beautiful smile again. One, to beg the blessings of the gods. I wait for that day. When the boards cover all, all sadness too will be covered. But until my dreams return to reality, I will have to swallow all the pain. There's a key embedded in the stone beneath the depression. We got this one. And is one. And is one. When the dark grail is found, I shall dedicate this thing. You who deny death grant us fortune eternal. When the white breath is found, I shall dedicate this thing. O spirit of the mist, grant us fortune eternal. When the crimson words are found, I shall dedicate this thing. Oh, you gods deep in slumber, grant us fortune eternal. You'll notice that a chalice, a bottle of white fluid, and a red book are objects we picked up in order to get the ritual ending. These were what we needed to um, resurrect Mary. <laughs> there we go. Done and done. Ernest? Are you there? No. I guess not. Okay. Would y'all like one of the most fascinating lines of dialogue in this entire fucking game? Nothing very interesting. Oh, is this a teddy bear? It's not very well made, but it's kind of, it's sort of cute anyway. I bet Laura would love it. She loves bears. Laura, who am I talking about? Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's like she's one person and she's waking, awakening into being someone else, which has some weird implications. Here's what I think is happening. James doesn't learn Laura's name until he meets her with Eddie in the bowling alley, which is after he meets Maria. So this is before James ever learns Laura's name. There's no way that he could do that. And if Maria is simply a manifestation from James's subconscious, there's no way that she would know it either, unless she's also being affected by Laura's memories of Mary. I think that Maria is made from James's memories of Mary, but also from Laura's memories of her. Maria's supposed to be a manifestation from Laura? Not entirely. I think it's both of them. We don't see anything that we consider to be a manifestation from Laura, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be any. Gosh, that's weird. <clears throat> Do 
to my dearest daddy, happy birthday from Amy Baldwin. I got a birthday card and present. Hmm. Give it to my daddy. There's a book here. It looks like a plant encyclopedia. Acacia. A genus of evergreen trees of the mimosa tribe of the pea family. Its tiny flowers are yellow or white and glow grow in clusters. Common varieties include the gum tree. The acacia tree is a potent symbol in many religions across the world. In Christianity, it represents eternal life and morality. In ancient Egypt, it represented purity and rebirth, while in ancient Babylonia, it was thought of as the tree of the goddess Ishtar and was the symbol of life. It was also a holy tree to the ancient Jews who built the sacred Ark of the Covenant from it, and for whom it signified a peaceful death and a release from grief. Fucking bugs! Nothing looks really interesting. Lost memories. I have the strongest trust, you may even call it faith, in the miracle called Resurrection of the Dead. Upon the hill where the light descended, the beast intoned his song with words of blood, drops of mist, and the vessel of night. The grave became an open field. Vessel of night, like an obsidian goblet? Drops of mist, like a, like a white fluid, maybe? Words of blood, like a crimson, like a tome of crimson or something like that? Hmm. The people wept in fear and joy at the reunion, but my faith in the salvation of Shukilpaba did not waver. Okay, so this is really obviously making reference back to the ritual ending of the game. However, the word Shukilpaba is really interesting. There is a reference in Silent Hill 3 to a god named Shukilbara, which might just be a different spelling of this particular one. They could be related. It is also spoken of in the ancient legends. The original worshippers did not believe that death was the end, but that it was simply the path by which the deceased returned to nature. They also believed the process was reversible. Did Ernest write this? What could it mean? Blood red, mist white, night black. Do you know a little girl named Amy? Why do you ask me that? This letter. To my dearest daddy. It's from a girl named Amy Baldwin. Your daddy? It's a weird way to phrase that. Where'd you find that? Up in the attic. Oh, what a fool. Now, it's too late. I finally understand why. Why she was there. Why she was holding that empty envelope when she... when she fell. Ernest. Amy. She isn't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I reminded you. No need to apologize. You didn't remind me. I've never forgotten. Maria, some things we forget, and some things we can never forget. It's funny. I'm not sure which one is sadder. It's been ten years, but I still... Ernest, I'm sorry. I didn't know. No, it's, it's fine. Maria, that letter. I'll leave it here. Thanks. Maria? So you must be... That's why. That's why you could see me. Huh? So perhaps that means that I can hope for a miracle as well. What do you mean? What do you mean? In the apartment next door, there's a bottle containing a white liquid. I don't know exactly where it is, but I know it's in there somewhere. I must have it. You... want me to get it for you? Please. Why don't you just get it yourself? If I could, believe me, I would, but I... Wait. I'll open the stairway door. Ernest, do you really believe it will work? I don't know. Well, that's okay. I don't mind fighting for an impossible cause. Anyway, it beats just giving up and doing nothing. Maria, thank you.
Amy Baldwin. She was loved too much by God. Seven years was not enough time. That epitaph's pretty rough. Keep out of haunted mansion. All these bogos and guys. Ah. It's a safe, but I don't know how to open it. And I do know where we could find the combination, but uh, um, I don't think Maria's gonna do that. Disgusting. Could you imagine someone stupid enough to stick their hand in this thing? Ugh. Ah, this one. So. None of the coins are inserted into this, which means James hasn't done this puzzle yet. And that's where we pick up the white liquid. Thank you, Maria. That's the only item I couldn't get myself. By the time I found out about it, I could no longer leave this house so long. Yes, but will- Maria? The gods are here. You know it too. You were born in this town. Kinda. Sure, God is the right word. Do you believe in fate? Not really. That's fine then. Ernest, can I open this? This is a dead end. There's nothing beyond here. I know. So... What if I had said I believed in fate? That James. He's a bad man. James. Hmm? He... Yes. I know. He's looking for the you. That isn't you. Because he's kind? Do you... Know something? Yes. Maria. You're... Anyway, that's just what you think. You don't really know anything. That's fine. Okay. That's just your theory. Your game theory. Oh. Is Ernest just the room? I guess he wouldn't be the first Silent Hill character to just be a room. <laughs> he opened his present, though. Ernest seems to be an honest-to-god ghost. I mean, he might be a manifestation, but he's basically a ghost, too. Sure as hell wasn't James who conjured him. Correct. But I think I know who did. Do I look like your girlfriend? My name is Maria. So here's what I think. I feel like this is a cute little what if scenario that's, that's kind of cute. It's very fun. It's a little short. I like the environments in it. But uh, the big question, I guess, is like, well, how does Maria know Laura? How does she seem to recognize James's name? And I think like, those questions are understandable because I do think there's a little bit of Laura's influence. There's a little bit of um, James's memory of Mary in her. So she can sort of take some of those memories. That makes sense. But the big question here is who is Ernest? And I think I have an answer to that, but I, I do believe it's a little bit open as a question. I do believe it's a little bit open to interpretation. He seems to know a lot about the cult rituals and stuff. That's kind of cool. I, I think he's a ghost. 
But here's a here's an interesting thing. What if Ernest is Maria's pizza? Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. All right. All right let me lay it out. <laughs> Sounds absurd, but I like that theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got that. <laughs> he does seem to possibly be based on a real person, so I'm not. I'm not 100 about that. That said, I think that's okay. I think that he's a manifestation of Maria's. So what James has manifested is Maria, his memories of Mary, all the things he wants from Mary, but she's also not that. <laughs> she's everything he wants, but not in the way that he wants. It's very much a monkey's paw. She's a way for him to feed into his guilt about what he did to Mary, even though she's everything that he wanted Mary to be kind of, but it's wrong. The same with Eddie's pizza. It's delicious, but it's also unhealthy. It's a thing that Eddie can do instead of being productive or facing his, like, the things that he did. He can just sit there and eat and feel worse, even if the pizza itself is tasty. And Ernest is very much like that for Maria. She wants somebody else there, and Ernest is somebody else there, but not somebody who's available. Somebody who doesn't want anybody else around. And he's a way for her to continue hurting herself. To, to continue feeling lonely, even if there is somebody else around. Ernest is Maria's pizza. <laughs> this is a cute little scenario. I, I think this is a fun little side thing, you know? <laughs> so... In Silent Hill 2, we can see that this game is very much interested in the idea that these people entering this town are influencing the town's spiritual power to take the form of things that allow them to spiral deeper and deeper into their own problems. The town is shaping reality in order to make it easier for these people to sink deeper and deeper into that darkness that exists inside them into their worst impulses. That's one of the things that makes this game so interesting, is the way that that happens. But it's so frustrating that every single game after this one is also interested in doing that too. <laughs> that every single game after 4 is so interested in guilt and trauma that it eschews all explanations for why reality is shaping itself that way. And simply says, ghost town punishes people for their sins. And it's frustrating because Silent Hill 2 might be the best game in the series. It might be one of the best games ever made, but it is the worst thing to happen to the Silent Hill series. And that's such a struggle. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 is my pizza, is what I'm trying to say. I love this game. I love playing this game. It's everything I want out of a game. I'm so sick of people liking this game. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 causes people to make the worst Silent Hill games. <laughs> it's always terrible when the wrong lessons are learned from what makes a particular game work. It's exactly the same as right after Halo 2 came out. Every shooter game added dual wielding with two weapons and regenerating health. Every shooter was doing it. It's so frustrating. <laughs> this game's fantastic. Please go and play it. It's wonderful. <laughs>